and welcome. You are listening to <clears throat> and perhaps even watching the Financial Survival Network on YouTube. And uh, I'm trying to get it up on BitChute. It just doesn't want to load there for some reason. But uh, hopefully soon it will happen. Well, the election elections come and go. And as usual, the American public is the big loser, regardless who wins. Maybe maybe here it matters a little more, at least in the short run, but the big picture is set. And with us now to get a look at that big picture is our good friend, Craig Hempke. You know him well, tfmetalsreport.com. Craig, oh, and if you got any questions for Craig or myself, what do you think the big picture is pointing to? Why don't you email us, kl at kerrylutz.com. Well, Craig, it's always great to have you on, especially today, because with all the election noise, distortion, and deception, you tend to really lose sight of the big picture, don't you? Right. Well, you know, and a lot of analysis is tick for tick kind of stuff. You know, people aggressively trade a lot of times. Uh, based upon they think there's going to be a pullback or that you know all this other kind of stuff and and I and I think you know we're kind of been trained ourselves that way in the last decade right everybody has the shortest attention span possible now because they all want instant gratification you know nobody wants to see higher prices for gold and silver than me after the last decade of doing this but I also know man nothing ever moves straight up right um, and so it's really important to remain focused upon that big picture, right? The main fundamentals that are driving things. 10 years of TF Metals Report, Carrie. I, my uh, 10 year anniversary is one week from today. And we, we've always been about the math, the, and the certainty of the math. The math is a math, man. It's like, what do they, what do they like to say? You, can, you can't you can have your own facts or whatever that, how you that- You can have your own goes. opinion. You can have right. your own opinion, but you can't have your own facts. Right, the math is the math. And what we've always called it is the end of the great Keynesian experiment, where just simply servicing the existing debt becomes a, a, such an exponentially growing problem that the central banks uh, can't keep up. And that's where we are now, that COVID has really sped it along. And so the big picture here on election day is, you know, the image of the train speeding in toward the bridge that's out. It doesn't matter if Trump's the engineer or if Biden's the engineer. It really doesn't. I mean, maybe maybe the train doesn't quite reach the bridge quite as quick as quickly if Trump's in charge. But with everything that's going on, I mean, we're still headed toward you know the bridge that's out, regardless. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I think that's an apt an apt metaphor. Uh, the economy, the central banks, the money printing. All of it is a runaway train, and yeah. eventually the runaway train runs out of track, and, right. then, and then, then the inevitable occurs, and then it's got to be cleaned up. Well, obviously we're heading down that track, and I think if I can labor the uh, the metaphor a little bit further, we're picking up speed, and we're coming to a dead man's curve here, and <laughs> what's going to happen? Yeah. Well, and, and Carrie, that's, I mean, that's really the math. That's all there is to it. Um, that existing level of debt, which just the U.S. noted and acknowledged public debt. You know, you can go to that usadebtclock.org, right, and see it. It's $27 trillion, up $3.2 trillion in the fiscal year that was just completed at the end of September. You know, Trump's in charge. I mean, maybe it'd be another $3 trillion this year. You know, we've got... We've already got states locking down again in the U.S. Geez, if Biden's in charge, maybe we'll get another one of those for another month. Um, and so then we're looking at $5 trillion this year. You know, and at some point, Kerry, just the amount of cash that needs to be created to service the existing debt uh, becomes just more than a trillion dollars a year. And that's why, you know, there's a lot of talk. Um, and I continue to see it, which just baffles me. You know, we know that the Fed intervenes uh, in all markets, especially the treasury market. What, what else is quantitative easing if not treasury market manipulation? The Fed has stated, and Powell will state again this week, I'll remind you there's an FOMC meeting that concludes on Thursday. Uh, he'll state again this week that they are committed to keeping interest rates low through 2023, okay? They have 
on several occasions noted that they have studied and are continuing to research the effectiveness of something called yield curve control, which is a policy that the Fed put in place from the years 1942 to 1951 in an attempt to manage the massive uh, debt to GDP ratio that we had coming out of World War II. And now we're approaching those levels again. That's what the Fed will do next. They'll attempt to uh, cap interest rates, not just the Fed funds rate that they can control, but you know the 10-year note yield or you know even farther out than that, because they can't have interest rates go higher for all these different reasons. But one, just to because that that issue, that problem of servicing the accumulated debt. So for anybody that's a gold and silver investor, I just make it this simple. Okay. Yeah, you don't you want to be on board now. Okay. You want to be buying the dips now because of the fundamental bull market that we're in. But if you, you know, if you're still kind of on the fence, him and hawing, wait and see this week or maybe even at the next Fed meeting in December, if we start getting some uh, signs, you know, read between the lines that this yield curve control uh, program is coming next year. Because man, when it does, I mean, then it's really off to the races. Yeah, so yield price controls, that's effectively flattening the yield curve. I've also heard mention that they're going to do this in uh, in Europe as well, the ECB, yeah. and where they're going to basically have what they call a perpetual bond. So it just pays you yeah. a modicum of interest, and you'll ne it'll never be paid off. <laughs> they never have to pay it yeah. back. Yeah, they just never pay back the principal. <laughs> Good deal. Hey, Carrie, let me loan. Why don't you loan me some money, or I'll loan you some money, or however that is. Isn't that amazing. Yeah. Yeah, really shocking that they can pull this stuff off. But uh, who do the banks work for when you get down to it here? Well, right, yeah, right. right. Well, and, and this is all very, again, this is all very important in understanding the fundamental drivers of why, yeah, who knows what gold's going to do over the next 24 hours. I mean, I think we all remember what happened four years ago on this day, right? And so I think a lot of folks are, yeah, maybe a little slightly reticent to taking a substantial position. Uh, ahead of that. But nonetheless, these things are coming. Uh, kind of a period of stagflation or anything else. Uh, negative inflation adjusted interest rates, meaning you take the nominal rate, let's say it's 1% on a treasury, a note or bond. And then you subtract the inflation rate, let's say that's 2% going to 3%. That gives you a negative inflation adjusted return. And that historically is the most positive fundamental uh, for gold ownership that we ever see. And in fact, having negative rates now is the first time we've had it since the late seventies. And that was a period when gold went from a hundred dollars to $900 in about three years. So um, let's keep an eye out for that. Just get past the election, but let's keep an eye on that with the fed meeting in a couple of days too. Yeah, we seem to attach so much importance to the election. And don't get me wrong, there are things that are important. It's kind of like uh, it's kind of like uh, the captain's taking control of the uh, airplane. Uh, all four engines are out, hmm. and one guy just wants to auger in, just take that trip right straight into the ground and blow everything up. And the other guy would try like to try to glide and pull a sully and landed in the Hudson River with everybody uh, getting uninjured and escaping with their lives. Uh, it's not very practical. Uh, there aren't many pilots out there like Sully, and certainly there's no politicians out there with his equivalent of skill, what the skill he possesses for flying. They just don't have for the skill to guide the economy in the country. Mm -hmm. Nobody can. It really is just that... Uh, that Frankenstein uh, invention here that, uh, that is uh, ready to turn on its maker. Yeah. What, what we don't know, Carrie, is the level at which uh, it officially snaps, right? I mean, the math, like I said, is the math, okay? And we can see that number, that interest on all debt, public and private, you know, it's starting to ramp up exponentially, kind of going parabolic, which is obviously, you know, that's, again, all part of the math. But what we don't know is the point at which it becomes uh, where it breaks. You know, it's like when you reach into a drawer, you know, where all your pencils and pens are and you, and you find a rubber band and that rubber band has been in there for five or 10 years. And you can see it's already a little frayed, 
you know, kind of coming apart. And you're like, huh, I wonder if that rubber band's any good. And you begin to pull on it and you can see it fray even more. And you're like, wow, I can't believe I pulled it this far. <laughs> you pull it a little farther and wow, it's hanging in there. And then bang, right? Um, that's the moment that's coming. I don't, whether that'll be in 2020, 2021, we'll see. Uh, but that moment's coming again. And again, it's not like, you know, we're splitting atoms here, my friend. I mean, this is just math. And that's why you need to own precious metal because all paper money systems going back to the days of the Romans have ultimately failed for the same reason that we're going through now. And when that happens, the pendulum invariably swings all the way back to some kind of sound money basis. And then the cycle starts over again. And so that's why when you hear people like me talk about gold and silver and physical gold and silver that you actually hold, um, that is your lifeboat uh, through all of this. And, and that's why it's so important on it. All right. So a couple of things I just want to go over with you. Uh, I spoke with uh, Andy Sheckman over at Miles Franklin. And by the way, that's the only place where I buy metals at this point, unless I'm buying a few coins on eBay for the heck of it. Uh, yeah. But he said uh, several convergences and this call for the great reset. You got that coming from the, uh, the Bilderberg uh, World Economic Conference. Then you've got gold being made a tier one asset for banks again, where it was a tier three, and then uh, repatriation, repatriation of gold brought back to Germany and other European states. We don't really know how that project is progressing here, but it seems like they're getting ready for the inevitable. And then, of course, the call for a new Bretton Woods, which is the yeah. conference that took place. I don't remember where. Is it New Hampshire or Vermont or someplace? And uh, it took place, and that's what created our current monetary system by default. Right, 1944. Right? Yeah, correct. So, and then you had modifications to Bretton Woods, of course, uh, you know, the Plaza Atene Agreement, and a couple of others, but basically we're at Bretton Woods. So the call is coming to a new Bretton Woods. And I don't know what they're going to do because the world is awash in debt. So some, the debt's got to go someplace, but everybody's debt is somebody else's asset. Right. That's right. That's the, the problem. The beauty of double entry accounting, right? As well. uh, everybody's that's, that's debt is somebody else's. So I don't know where this goes. And I'm, it's kind of like uh, beyond my comprehension that it can happen smoothly and uh, be finessed. Uh, reserve currencies just don't go down quietly and the yeah. world just moves on. Well, and, and Kerry, that's, that's why the rubber band analogy fits. You, you just don't know how far they can stretch it because as you rightly point out, in the current system, uh, debt is considered an asset, which is like, okay, I guess. And when you talk about a reset, people like to put that out. Well, there's going to be this big reset as if it's a simple process. Forgetting that uh, for every, uh, that's a pretty good deal if you're a debtor, right? But it's not a very good deal if you're a creditor. <laughs> you're like, Wait, no, hold on just a second. You owed me X, you know, however many millions of dollars or what. It's like the old adage, right? That if, if you owe the bank, um, uh, if the bank, oh, now I'm going to screw Go it up. Bank a thousand bucks. <laughs> You have a problem if you owe them a million. They the have bank a has a problem. Exactly. Right. It's exactly right. And, and that's the thing. And so the banks will defend this system as long as possible. I'm not talking like JP Morgan. I'm talking about the, uh, the Bank of England, the ECB, the Fed, the Bank of Japan and the like. Right. Right now, gee, I just saw a thing with, from Christine Lagarde, right? The head of the ECB used to be the head of the IMF just this past weekend talking about a digital euro and yeah. how it's coming. And, and the Fed's been talking about that. Well, what good will that do? That'll be a way for really to kind of circumvent fiscal policy in a sense that the Fed can actually just print money uh, digitally. And they give you a wallet. And you have yeah, and credit, wallet. Right, and credit your account. In fact, Powell, when Powell gave that speech at the virtual Jackson Hole, talking about how you know they no longer have an inflation target, you know that's going to cause them to raise raise interest rates, it's all part of this. Trying to get everybody to understand that rates are going to stay low basically forever now. Um, but when he said that, he said the the problem because they can't have deflation, right? 
because deflation reduces liquidity and you need more and more liquidity, you know, to keep servicing all this debt and try to keep the whole, you know, keep blowing the bubble high, uh, larger and larger. So they can't have illiquidity. They can't have deflation. And Powell said, look, the, what you don't want to go down is the path of Japan, though we didn't mention Japan directly, where you have deflationary expectations, which leads to deflation, which leads to greater deflationary ex expectations, and the whole cycle just gets worse and worse. And he said, therefore, we will be looking at all sorts of unconventional policies in the months ahead. Well, huh, what's unconventional policy number one? Helicopter money. I mean, just giving people cash, tell them to go out and spend it. Um, that's kind of what these COVID stimulus things are. It's going to be a beyond that in the months and years to come. And again, all of this devaluation of the currency it just makes gold and silver, physical gold and silver, that much more valuable. And you know, and I'll give you one more thing, Carrie, that I just think is just so odd when you stop to consider it is all these uh, traders and asset allocators and uh, investors, they see gold and they either trade themselves or they program computers to trade gold futures based off of movements in the dollar. Well, a lot of times that's just based off the dollar index. Okay, well, what's a dollar index? That's just comparing the dollar to a basket of other fiat currency. They're all similarly being devalued to nothing. Yeah. So that doesn't make any sense. Why would you buy or sell your gold based off changes to an index of all fiat currency that's all just being printed to infinity? I that one just baffles me, but no one ever seems to stop and think about that. Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of like daylight savings time, which we just have had to endure for yet another year. Uh, an Indian uh, chief once uh, made the comment that daylight savings time, the white man thinks that he can take cut a piece of the blanket off of the bottom and put it on the top and sew it back on and thinks, think that he has a bigger <laughs> blanket, right? Isn't this the futility of uh, central banking when you get down to it, Craig? Yeah, I like that. I've not heard that one before, Kerry. That's a good one. Hey, well, this is the kind of craziness that uh, it just, you can't, uh, you know, but yeah, make it up. 10 pounds in a five pound bag. It just, yeah. You bad. know, and there are so many, parties that obviously have an interest in keeping the system going. It's not just the politicians. I mean, it trickles down through Washington and New York to everybody, really. I mean, everybody, nobody wants the collapse to happen, right? No one's sitting there going, damn, the whole system didn't collapse yesterday. Um, I mean, not even me. I mean, I'm who, who's looking forward to that? You know, the madness that'll come with it. A lot of times it comes with wars. So no one's looking forward to that. All I'm doing is acknowledging the inevitability of it and trying to prepare ahead of time because what you don't want to be, it's, it's like, let's put it this way. You know, it's, it's like if you knew that you lived in tornado alley, right. And you knew there was a possibility or a hurricane where, you know, like where you live, you knew that there was at least a possibility that a hurricane was going to come one day, but yet you never did. It took any precautions at all. You know, you didn't, build a house on stilts, you know, or you did, you know what I mean? By shut, her, oh, yeah. shut her, yeah, her. Lots of people who do this. Yeah, sure. You just want to just whistle past a graveyard and just assume everything's always going to be fine. Then the day the hurricane comes and you knew there was always a possibility a hurricane was going to come and you didn't do anything to prepare for that. You, you're just, you're going to feel like a dumbass, right? <laughs> okay. And that's all we're talking about here. The math is the yep. math, man. I mean, this is a certainty this is eventually coming. I don't know if it's next month, next year, five years from now, 2027, whatever. I'm just saying this, I mean, you just can't deny that this is now coming. And so, look, you can be do what I do, which is just steadily keep buying physical gold and silver and storing it, you know, in all sorts of places and owning the mining shares. You can get aggressive and try to market time and all that kind of stuff. And for that, you just might, I mean, if you really want to be aggressive you wait till the fed institutes this yield curve control policy and then you'll really know we're off and running um but in the meantime you just got to do something because having your head in the sand and just praying that tomorrow is always going to be like yesterday is not an effective strategy yeah absolutely denial uh, you know is a river isn't a river in egypt as right they and really you got to do something it, it is obvious it's been obvious to me honestly craig uh, since Volcker was a uh, bed chair yeah. that yeah. we were going to have this day. 
and we've had a cl- couple of close brushes like uh, back in the 80s and well i guess it was 1980 gold hit to uh, you know 850 an ounce and then we had 0809 and now we have the pandemic and you know we can trade conspiracy theories about the scamdemic all day long it really doesn't matter because if it wasn't this it was going to be something else yeah. but it's certainly driven us much closer to the inevitable and uh, you know we're not even talking about all the debt by the states and municipalities and pension oh, yeah. funds that can't be uh, adequately serviced so we're closer now than ever before maybe it goes on another year maybe it goes on five years hey every year that it goes on is a blessing because this is going to be a time of total chaos and real uh, real tribulation and uncertainty so one of the things you need to do is go over to tfmetalsreport.com follow everything that craig writes there join the forum it's, it's pretty much a bargain I mean, you can't uh, for your daily dose of uh, Starbucks, uh, I think it's cheaper than that, and it's definitely worth doing. Anyway, Craig, uh, hey, what what uh, what's the deal there now on your site? Well, you, know, you just made me think, Gary. It's, I mean, it's a whopping fifty cents a day, uh, fifteen dollars a month. Uh, for that, you get, I mean, ten years worth of gray hair and experience watching all this stuff. Uh, analysis every morning and a podcast every afternoon. So I'm kind of your eyes and ears to everything. And then an ongoing reminder to stay focused on the big picture. Um, And it's a great community uh, of people from around the world and all political stripes that understand, again, the math is the math. Hey, I'll just throw this out. I just thought of this while we're talking. From time to time, we've in the past, uh, I've given your uh, readers and your listeners and your viewers a coupon code so they can join with 50% off their first month. Should we try that again? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Sure. Hey, it's such a pivotal time. And I'm pretty sure we're going to rally into the year end just like we did last year and then even make higher highs next year. So this is the time you got to be really paying attention to your precious metals. And I would say this too. We knew that by looking at the chart that there was a smash coming last week. And so I had several of my subscribers write and say, hey, thank you. I waited to pull the trigger on buying 100 ounces of silver. And since I waited until for the smash you said was coming, I saved myself a hundred bucks. Well, that's six months of the subscription. Yeah. So I think, I think we can add value in a lot of ways. So anyway, let's do this. Uh, it's 15 bucks a month. But if you go and you sign up to the site, you subscribe and uh, you enter a monthly, uh, new monthly subscription, you get to the end where you do your cart and all that stuff and you check out, there'll be a place for a coupon code. Why don't we use a coupon code of LUTZ? L-U-T-Z. Okay. Uh, just type in LUTZ, L-U-T-Z, and you get 50% off your first month. If you stick around after that, then you can start paying full freight of 50 cents a day. But to begin with, we'll make it a little cheaper because I think this is a pretty important time to be paying attention. Uh, I couldn't agree with you more, and we are extremely grateful that you've uh, extended that generous offer to all of the FSN community out there. If you're not a subscriber to Craig's site, tfmetalsreport.com, Go there now, new subscription, use the discount code LUTZ, L-U-T-Z, and you'll save 50% off the first month. And with that, it, without further ado, write us, let us know what your thoughts are. Craig, you're always uh, definitely informative, controversial, and thought-provoking, <laughs> as they say in, in talk radio, to say the least, and we're greatly appreciative uh, send us an email, kl at kerrylutz.com. Twitter feeds at Kerry Lutz. Facebook page, Financial Survival Network, as well as the website, financialsurvivalnetwork.com. Sign up for a free newsletter. Craig, we'll talk to you again real soon. It's definitely getting interesting. Yeah, let's, uh, let's see where we are at the end of the year, Kerry, and make some plans for 2021. <laughs>